Hey everybody, happy Monday. Now, if you are an OG viewer of mine, or maybe you've binged all of my videos at some point, you will remember a very, very old and kind of cringy video about calculations, equations, and comparisons. In that video, I talk about how many of the rules we follow are unsaid, how we calculate what's okay and not okay to do, and how we can be negatively affected by those unsaid rules. I want to talk about this again because not only do I think that video is limiting, stating that it only happens in women and those with eating disorders, I don't know why I said that, but I also don't offer any tools or things to try out to stop ourselves from doing the things. So let's get into it. First, let me explain what I mean when I say calculations, equations, and comparisons. And no, I'm not talking about math. Don't worry. I don't like that either. I'm talking about the numbers we run in our heads before we make choices in life. This could definitely be about food. I know, those of us who struggle with an eating disorder could get our PhDs in calorie calculations, adding and subtracting all day, every day. But that's not the only place I believe this happens. We can compare ourselves to someone else around our age, someone we just assume is around our age, and immediately feel like a loser. We can quote unquote run the numbers in our head thinking that they are more successful, they're happier, they have nicer things, whatever. We don't even have to know that person or if what we're assuming is true. We just know that from the outside, it looks like they have the things that we want. And we apparently decided that we wanna feel bad about that. This judgment, then comparison, followed by self-hatred can happen in one minute flat. Pew! And I know I often share the quote, comparison is the thief of joy. And that's because it's true. Give it time to sink in. Comparison is the thief of joy. If we look out at what someone else has and make assumptions about them and in turn judgments about ourselves, we'll never feel good. There will always be someone who looks better, makes more, has more, does more, whatever. Someone else's success or happiness does not have to take away from our own. By comparing our life or body or whatever to someone else's gives away all our power. We then have no power to make ourselves happy. Does that make sense? It's like we just give it to them because however, we're gonna interpret that and we're gonna take that on. And as a reminder, we are the only ones that can make ourselves happy. Yes, I know, it sucks. It's hard work, but it's true. We cannot count on other people to do our internal work for us. We have to make choices every day that build our own happiness. If we wait for someone else to do it, we'll probably be waiting forever. And getting stuck in this comparison cycle can also make us more negative in general. We can be angry, judgmental, and easily upset. Something that I've done off and on for years, and I've talked about this before, is forcing positive thoughts and positive judgments. I know that sounds crazy, but every time I see someone else, like on TV, on social media, or in real life, and I have a negative judgment about them, or how it reflects badly upon me, I instead force myself to come up with some kind and thoughtful thing to say about them, and then about myself. And there are days when this is really, really hard, I'll be honest, but trust me, when I tell you that if you do this for a few days in a row, just do your best, keep at it, it's like a new muscle, we're doing it, you will totally feel the difference. You will see the world as a more happy, loving place instead of seeing it as them versus me. And to reshare an example that I gave in the old video, if we go out to dinner with friends, okay, it's a big group of us, and the first person to order, opts to order a salad. Maybe dressing on the side, no bread, I'm not interested. Even if we really wanted that fried chicken sandwich, we may fall in line with this unsaid rule that was thrown down. And we'll order a salad, even though we wanted that sandwich. And if we decide to go against this unsaid rule and order the sandwich, we can feel like we have to explain ourselves or make some self-deprecating joke, like, I'm just a fat pig, don't mind me. When in reality, we just ordered what sounded good and are possibly the only person at the table to actually listen to their body and their cravings. Because yet another one of those unsaid rules is that cravings are bad and should be shoved down, ignored, and we must be punished if we give in to them. 
Think about it. We crave a lot of things, not just food, but we often feel bad about it, like craving love, support, attention. I can tell you how many times my patients and viewers on here share how they feel bad for needing anything, as if us needing professional help or social support makes us bad or broken in some way, when all it really does is make us human. I encourage all of us to notice what we crave. And as long as it doesn't feel a harmful addiction like drugs, alcohol, self-injury, overspending, or gambling, just to name a few, I think we should give into it. Cravings tell us something very important. They tell us what our body and brain need. Maybe we need something with sugar in it because we're running low on energy and our body needs a quick pick-me-up. Perhaps we need to call that friend, not just text them, because we aren't feeling connected and are starting to have depressive thoughts and feeling isolated. So pay attention to your cravings and give in to them. And after doing so, check back in, see how you feel. What judgments or other cravings came up as a result? It could be really interesting and teach us a lot about ourselves, to be honest. And if you're one of those people who struggles with an eating disorder, and you're constantly comparing your body, running your numbers, and having to earn things that you crave, remember that your eating disorder won't ever be happy. And it won't make you happy. It will only take from you. Take your pride, your happiness, your focus, and your ability to live your life. Maybe, possibly, right? Bridge statements. Maybe we try not calculating things for two hours. Or maybe we can only do it for 30 minutes. Whatever you can do, let's start there. Notice how not doing that makes you feel. What comes up for you? Do you feel out of control? Anxious? Sad? Like you aren't worthwhile anymore? Notice. But don't judge. Because it's okay to feel and think however we need to feel and think. Not doing what our eating disorder tells us is hard. But what we experience as a result of not doing it is really helpful. It can tell us what we're getting out of our eating disorder or what purpose it's serving for us. And if you've been watching me for a while, you know that I believe we have to figure out the reason we have our eating disorder to be able to recover from it. So dig into this. Stop running your numbers. Don't weigh yourself. Don't buy that binge food or go for that run. Let's see how it feels. Journal about it. I know you hate the J word, but you knew it was coming, let's be honest. So take the time to get to know yourself and what emotions your eating disorder is trying to hide. If it helps, try using an impulse log. They have these things in apps like Recovery Record and Calm Harm. Um, those are great apps, by the way. But they ask you what the urge is. And in this case, th that would be like, what? I want to count calories or I want to buy that binge food or, or I want to, you know, earn the food that our body needs through working out. Next is going to ask what emotions are coming up for you. Try to identify, you know, one to three of them. Then... What could we do instead? Get that coping skill list. Maybe we gotta call a friend, color, journal, whatever. Then we wait for 30 minutes. Then after doing those things, we see if the urge passes. It usually does. And I know it's really hard, but I promise it works. And finally, try taking stock of things this week. What are the unsaid rules you abide by? Do you agree with them or not? Could you do something against one of those rules this week? Mm, risky, right? Also, what do you crave food-wise, connection-wise? Write down these things and make time for them. Give in to your cravings and notice how you feel. Also, pay attention to when you're comparing yourself and your life to other people. Force yourself to come up with something positive about you and the other person and see if that stops this from continuing to happen. I believe if we can just pay more attention to what's going on in our minds and relationships, we will feel so much better. So give it a try and let me know what you learn. And if you're comfortable, leave it in those comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful or at least gave you something to think about. And I will see you next time. Bye.